Good morning on this snowy, snowy Sunday. We greet all those who are worshiping with us live stream this morning, and we especially point out that Larry Gilman came to church today and uh, braved the snow, <laughs> and we give him a lot of credit. <coughs> Yay! Yay! So welcome to the United Church of Clinton. I'm Reverend Marilyn Wilcox. We're so glad that you joined us this morning. This is Epiphany Sunday, which marks the arrival of the wise men to see the child Jesus. We come to the close of the Christmas season and enter Epiphany season where we follow the light of Christ. So we do have some announcements. Um, Thursday, there will be a stewardship meeting for anybody who can make it at 7 o'clock uh, via Zoom. Next Sunday after worship, we're going to have um, an assessment of the German Christmas market, how that went this year and how we can make it better for next year. Please keep our special members and friends in your prayers, Ruth, Art, June, EDK, Mary Ellen P., and my dad, Everett. We especially shout out to June and, and let her know that we are lifting up prayers for her. She asked for special prayers this week. She's now in Beaumont in West Boylston. Those of you who are on council heads of committees and officers, the reports for council meeting will be due this Friday to Kelly. On the 21st of January via Zoom at 7 o'clock, we're going to have a book study on how to lead when you don't know where you're going, an interesting book for leaders um, of all types in this church, I invite you to join us. Happy birthday to Shelley on January 13th, Teresa on the 17th, and Sarah Erickson on the 18th. Happy anniversary to Carolyn and Tom on the 9th. We ask that you consider giving to the community cafe. We provide a meal once a month to the week community cafe. Uh, we will be passing the plate next week and a Sunday in February to raise funds for that effort. Today is communion Sunday, so if you're at home, please grab a beverage and something to, like bread that you can find, a cracker, uh, toast, whatever you have next to you, um, get that ready for the end of our service. We are collecting coats, new and very gently washed, used coats. Um, please consider that uh, as an offering that you can do, a mission piece that you can help us with. We'll be doing that through the month of January. And I think I got everything. Anybody think of any other announcements? Gloria. Uh, yes. Um, first of all, um, I'd just like to introduce who's here as well. So <laughs> Pastor Marilyn obviously is here. Larry, as she mentioned, our big Larry has made it through. We're going to call him Nanook of the North for the rest of the day. <laughs> uh, we also have our wonderful techie whiz bang right at the back who is currently come through snow drifts and skied, et cetera, to get here. <laughs> Hi, Heather McNamara, right? And Heather's mom is here, Pam Dobeck. Um, Alana is next to me up here. Um, now, here's who are with us in spirit, but not physically. We have no Kate, our musician. We said she absolutely m could not possibly risk traveling in this weather. So this will lead to interesting interpretations of this morning's music, seeing we don't have perfect pitch up here, and some of us have also got a rip-roaring cold. Um, we do like to welcome, though, um, people coming in right now, virtually, um, Jackie, Tim, uh, Connie, Shelley. So... We welcome you all this morning. So shall we 
begin with the chimes? We what? will begin with the chimes. Bit, a little bit of improvisation, the chimes, and then Alana will lead us into the call to worship. Okay, everyone? So, welcome on this magical, magical morning. everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. Please join me in the call to worship. Ascribe to creator glory and honor. We follow the star that brings us to the one who came as a holy infant. Ascribe to the holy one strength and peace. The Christ child is visited by the magi who come, come to, to pay, pay homage. Ascribe to the omnipresent one power and gentleness. Let, Let us follow the star that brings us to Jesus. And now we come to our first time to join our voices in song. And this morning we will be singing or interpreting in a very unique way, We Three Kings. And this is number 172 in our hymnals for any for Big Larry and Pam and any, you two. And then um, also we invite our virtual worshipers because you will have the words on your screen and you know the tune. So, or if you don't, just speak it. So let us all join together wherever we may be this snowy, snowy morning with We Three Kings. And at this moment, I'm going to invite Pastor Marilyn to join us over here on this microphone for the interpretation, a unique and special interpretation of We Three Kings from the three of us. <laughs> we three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never, over us all to reign. Frankincense to offer have I, incense brings to crown him again. Oh, sorry. I'm going to start that one again. Frankincense to offer is mine. Incense owns a deity nigh. Prayer and praising, voices raising, worshiping God on high. Myrrh is mine, its bitter perfume breathes a life of gathering gloom, sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the stone-cold tomb. Glorious thou, behold him arise, Christ and God and sacrifice. Alleluia, alleluia, they ascended through the earth and skies. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star of royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us. 
us to thy perfect light. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Tyrant God, you, you come, come among us in the fullness of your being and affirm the fullness of our humanity, mind, body, and spirit. In you we find joy and pleasure. In you we claim peace and hope. In you we arise to greet a new day and a new way of being. Shape us in this time together that we might reflect your goodness and your way. Amen. And now those of us in the sanctuary will join together to pass the peace of Christ. And as is our custom at this time, we invite our virtual worshipers, wherever you may be at this moment, to hold in your mind's eye all those you wish to pass the peace of Christ to today. And we will just say, peace be with you. So. Passing the peace of Christ, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And now we'll join together in the Gloria Patri. Glory be to the Father and to the As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now back to Alana for the first scripture reading. Our first scripture reading this morning is Isaiah <clears throat> 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried in their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall be carried, oh sorry, your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels, the Maiden and the Ipha and all from Shaba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim and praise the love of the Lord. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join with me in the prayer of transformation and restoration. Righteous God, we confess our need of you in every aspect of our lives. Lift us from the valleys of despair and hopelessness. Free us from the societal norms, pressures, and conventions that conflict 
with or diminish your kingdom. Release, Release us from, from shame, shame and fortify us with grace for transformation and new life. Amen. Amen. Beloved, the Holy One has declared you good in your being as you have been uniquely created. The Holy One has faith in you to be the best version of yourself. The Holy One companions with you in the process of growth, renewal, and sanctification. And the Holy One empowers and emboldens us to spread the good news, pursue justice and liberation, and be agents of the transformation in the world. Receive the grace God gives us to fail, to learn, and to be more like Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The moment for all God's children this morning has to do with the theme of follow the leader. So how many of you, both here and watching from home, have played the game follow the leader? Maybe. Yep, yep. So that's a fun game, and it's always fun for the leader because you can do all sorts of crazy things and make people look like fools. <laughs> but today, um, we come to Epiphany Sunday, and we mark the arrival again of the Magi, the wise men, to see Jesus. So how did they find their way to the Christ child? How were they led? A glorious, tremendous star shone in the sky, and they followed a holy light. Can we follow the leader this year? We follow the light of Christ that shines so gloriously in our lives. On this Epiphany Sunday, let us consider the light of Christ and seeking Christ's presence in our lives. Let us pray. Dear God, as the Magi found the Christ child so long ago, help us to follow our hearts to find Christ in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now we are going to raise our voices again uh, for those in the sanctuary. We're going to sing the first Noel, which is number 151, 151 in our hymnals. And we invite our virtual worshipers, wherever you may be, to join with us too. And you are probably familiar with the melody. Um, if not, just say the words. This morning we are going to sing verses 1 and 5. Verses 1 and 5. So here we go with the first Noel. And the first Noel, the angels did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. Noel, 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 born is the King of Israel. Then entered 
we do have prayer concerns this morning. We are especially thinking of Jackie um, and all she's going through health-wise, but she, we learned that she did lose her father this week, and our prayers go out to you, Jackie, and your family, and Kevin, to your family. Um, you're very special to us. We want you to know that, and we're here for you. We are also thinking about June, especially. She asked for prayers, and we are lifting her up in prayer today. Pray for Dad, who's back at the Life Care Center after a scary um, bout with pneumonia. Um, also, Ruth, Art, Mary Ellen P., EDK, Melissa, Pamela, the friends and family of Gail, Butch, Jane, Jim, and Susie, Michelle, Amy and Pam, Vicki, Mary, Tammy, Christian, Paula, the Nesson family, Jackie, of course, Mary, Mary, uh, the Bouty family, I'm mispronouncing that, I'm sorry, Margie, Henry, Carol's mother, those affected by gun violence, the people of Ukraine in the Middle East, we're lifting up the memory of Mary's life. We're thinking of Pastor Carol, Gloria Pop, Harold, and we are thinking about the people of Japan this day after the devastating experience they all had. Are there others from the congregation we need to lift up today? Any other names? Nothing? So let us go to God in prayer. Powerful and almighty God, we come to you during this epiphany season, ready to follow the light that sheds awareness in our past to be Christians. We praise your name for all good we see in life. We lift up our gratitude for all your blessings that we perceive to relate to our lives. Be with those broken or torn, those who seek out better ways of existing, folks who strive to make sense out of life and offer those desires and wishes upon others in our human race. Be with those affected by matters of challenging health, concerns both physical, emotional, or mental. Be with the poor who struggle to make ends meet each day. Be with those challenged with those who are in worn, torn areas of our world, those affected by extreme weather conditions, natural disasters, and more. We pray for all who, challenge in their own, who are challenged in their own ways, both those challenges that we are aware of and those that we are not aware of. Be with those who bring concerns with them today that have gone unspoken. And this day we lift up in prayer all those previously mentioned. We pray for those concerns of our virtual attendees that you have brought in your minds this day. Everlasting God, we lift up these concerns and joys this day in honest petitions. In this new year, may we in some cases be the answer to prayer in the lives of others. We pray in the name of Jesus, the child born in Bethlehem so many, many years ago. Amen. Amen. So the second scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. The visit of the Magi, and it goes like this. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, 
For so it has been written by the prophet, the prophet saying, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in the east until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. And so ends the reading. So the moment for holy humor this morning comes from the book that Alana gave me, Um, It has a little bit to do with the Christmas season, so I thought it might be appropriate. So the holy humor this morning goes like this. A Sunday school teacher of small children was concerned that his students might be a little confused about Jesus Christ because of the Christmas season's emphasis on his birth. He wanted to make sure that they understood that the birth of Jesus occurred a long time ago, that he grew up, etc. So he asked his class, where is Jesus today? Kirian raised his hand and said, he's in heaven. Davy was called and answered, he's in my heart. Good answer. Polly, waving his hand ferociously, blurted out, I know, I know, he's in our bathroom. The whole class got very quiet, looked at the teacher, and waited for a response. The teacher was completely at a loss for a few long seconds. He finally gathered his wits and asked Polly how he knew this. And Polly said, well, every morning my father gets up, bangs on the bathroom door and yells, Jesus Christ, are you still in there? (laughs) Yay. (laughs) So with that, we have to go to prayer. Dear God, we thank you for our moments of humor in our lives. We need it so very much in the midst of stress and strife and worries. We need to have humor to Mm -hmm. relax us and speak to us. And now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our prayers and our minds be acceptable in your sight, our strength, redeemer, and rock. Amen. Matt Laney, a UCC devotional writer, makes a following point about our second scripture reading this morning. In doing so, he highlights the following verse. On entering the house, the Magi saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Laney writes, 
One of my favorite characters in the musical theater is Tevya from The Fiddler on the Roof. Anybody know the pr exact pronunciation? Tevier? Well, we'll guess yeah, that that's, that's it. That's pretty it. That's it yeah. Tevier is fond of saying, as the good book says, yeah. usually followed by something that isn't in the good book. Yeah. The same is often true for Christmas. Luke's gospel says, Jesus was laid in a manger, but says nothing about a stable or that animals were present. And what about those three kings of Orient are in Matthew? Well, they aren't, Laney says. Matthew never calls them kings. There is no mention of camels. Matthew doesn't number them. There might have been three. There might have been 33. Here's something else the good book doesn't say about the Magi. They arrived in time for Christmas. In fact, they were late, really late. They entered the house, not the stable, and they saw a young child, not a newborn. That gives hope to a late bloomer like me. No matter how arduous the journey or how long the night or how reluctantly I move, the Christ child is content to extend the celebration until I arrive. Jesus will receive my presence and my gifts any time. When that happens, it's not only Jesus' birthday party, it's also mine and yours, too. As the good book says, to find Jesus is to be reborn. It doesn't say anything about when, and so ends Laney's observations. How true this all is. We observe Epiphany every January 6th, but that is not even the true date of when the wise men arrive to see for their own eyes the child named Jesus. As Laney suggests, Jesus might have even outgrown his baby state and might actually be a young child by this point. Yet the Magi sought out Jesus and found Jesus, whatever age he was when found. They paid him homage. And then knowing the child's life might be at risk, they traveled home by another route to save Jesus and his family. Herod was a wicked, cruel individual and highly paranoid. In reference to Jesus, Herod heard the child might be a mighty ruler who would overturn the powers to be. Herod could not take that whole idea in movement. He would seek out ways to eliminate that threat by going forth to do some pretty heinous acts, acts that are recorded further on in our text. Even the unspeakable he goes about carrying forth. When we seek out Jesus, we do so in a way that will bring us comfort, strength, and the motivation to have a relationship spiritually. This is the leadership that Jesus will provide. How do we in this season of Epiphany seek out Christ and let him enter our lives? In our first scripture reading from Isaiah, we hear the theme of light in the following verses. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. This, this light that is also represented by the light that was shed by the Bethlehem star 
is an invitation to look upon the Christ child as the Magi did and offer great homage and praise. We take a moment to take it all in and give thanks. The person of Christ sought to do good things and to preach the kingdom of God. He wrote, rewrote and retold the ancient texts and brought to light new ways of thinking about things. That light is something we inspire to follow during this liturgical time of the Christian year. How will you follow the star of Bethlehem this year? How will you seek out the Christ child and let his presence enter your own? How will you present gifts to him? How will you present gifts on his behalf to make a difference? There is a lot to consider during these weeks of Epiphany. Stay tuned to developing thoughts, themes, and challenges to make a difference. May it be so for you and for me. Amen. Amen. So you can't physically give offerings today because you're at home perhaps, so please remember you can go to our website, our, our um, church website, and you can go to the donate tab to give online this week. We appreciate your generosity. So the invitation to generosity. Let us return a portion of our abundance to the creative and liberating energy and work of God in the world. May our resources be used for the glory of the Holy One and in the name of the one who modeled abiding generosity praise god from whom all blessings flow praise god all creatures here below praise god above ye heavenly host creator christ and holy ghost and together we pray the prayer of dedication and thanksgiving. <clears throat> Holy One, receive our offerings as gifts of ourselves. Increase the gifts and uplift our generosity to new heights. May our giving bear fruit that sustains, nurtures, and feeds a new world into being. Amen. And now we're going to gather and sing number 419 in our hymnals, 419, All Who Hunger Gather Gladly. And this morning, uh, we invite our virtual worshipers to join with us. The words are on the screen. And we will be singing verses 1 and 3. So all who gather, all who hunger, gather gladly. <laughs> All who hunger gather gladly, holy manna is our bread. Come from wilderness and wandering here in truth, we will be fed. You that yearn for days of fullness, all around us is our food. Taste and see the grace eternal. Taste and see that God is good. All who hunger sing together. Jesus Christ is living bread. Come from loneliness and longing. Here in peace we have been fed. Blessed are those who from this table live their days in gratitude. Taste and see the grace eternal. Taste and see that God is good.
And now we take our bread, whatever you have for bread, and we have our liquid, our coffee, our orange juice, our juice, and we prepare for communion. We are aware of the Heavenly One whose reach extends to every person, every nation, offering grace, forgiveness, and hope. A saving embrace draws us to God and to each other. Let God make us God's children, grateful for a place at God's feast. Humble before God's love and generosity, rejoicing in the beauty of each sibling. Let us all pray. Make us make your us children, O oh God, faithful in honoring and welcoming all, eager in sharing what we have found in you, safety, belonging, identity, a home of nurture and sending forth. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. All who come to me shall not hunger, and all who believe in me shall not thirst. We gather around these symbols of bread and wine, simple elements that speak of nourishment and transformation, and remember their significance. Let us all pray. Give, Give us, us eyes to recognize your reflection in the eyes of believers everywhere. Give us a mind to accept and celebrate our differences. We thank you for setting a table with enough space for us all. Amen. And now take your bread. Friends, we remember on the night of betrayal and desertion that Jesus sat in an upper room with his disciples. At a certain point in the meal, he took bread and he blessed it and he gave it to the disciples. Remember me after I'm gone. This is the bread of life broken for us. Take and eat. And now take your beverage. And after the bread, Jesus took the cup. And again, he blessed it. And he gave it to the disciples. This is the cup of salvation poured out for us all. Take and drink. Let us pray together the prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks, loving God, that you have refreshed us at your table. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another. As we have been fed by the seed that became grain and then became bread, may we go out into the world to plant seeds of justice, transformation, and hope. Amen. And now let's sing together number 169, one, six, oh sorry, 167, I'm having a concentration, 167, go tell it on the mountain and we invite our virtual worshippers too to join us as the words appear and we will be singing verses 1 and 3 and we will turn to Alana to lead us in this because she has a beautiful voice and I have no voice at the moment. So, <laughs> so everyone, go tell it on the mountain, Alana. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching for silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. 
as you arise from this gathering of world in spirit or in flesh, follow the voice into the world, claim your voice for the kingdom, join our collective voices in spreading good news. The voice will be with you. Glory to God, go in peace, arise. And let's close our worship seeing we do not have Kate to play a beautiful postlude and we hope she is warm and safe with her babies and husband. Let's sing together wherever we may be, amen. So one, two, three, amen. amen.